Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining today's webinar using SAP Datasphere to sell mission critical data to enterprises. And this webinar is part of a series hosted by DataRaid, all designed to help data providers grow their data businesses. I'm Lucy, Marketing Manager at DataRaid, and I'll be moderating today's discussion. And it's really nice to see some familiar provider names in the webinar today. I really hope that you find it insightful and that it answers the questions that you have around SAP Datasphere and its integration with Data Commerce Cloud. So it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today, Florian Neukirch, who is Product Specialist at SAP Data Warehouse, uh, sorry, Data uh, Datasphere. And Florian began his career when SAP, formerly Data Warehouse Cloud, now Data Datasphere, was released, and he's taken on a variety of roles within the organization. His focus is on data management and intelligent lookup. Some of you might already know that SAP is actually a longtime partner of Data Rates. So ever since we were part of SAP's startup foundry program back in 2019. So it's especially nice to welcome Florian as a representative of another German software company and a partner with whom Data Rate is pretty close. So thank you, Florian, for joining. Our other speaker today is DataRate's own product lead, Martin. Martin joined us at the beginning of 2023, and he is responsible for our two core products, Data Commerce Cloud and DataRate Marketplace. Prior to joining us at DataRate, Martin worked at DFL for four years, and he was responsible for improving customer personalization and probability insights. So again, Florian and Martin, thank you so much for spreading your pearls of wisdom in our webinar today. So just to lay down some ground rules before we properly get started, everyone's <clears throat> microphone is off by default, cameras are on, but you can always use the Q&A or chat function if something comes up during the course of the webinar. Most of you already submitted questions when you were registering. I've collected all of those and we'll ask them to Florian and Martin towards the end of the call. As for the sort of agenda for today's webinar we will begin with Florian introducing SAP Datasphere the data marketplace and its customer base as well as a tutorial on how to create data products suitable for enterprise clients. Martin will then take over to explain a little bit the integration between Data Commerce Cloud and SAP Datasphere and then we will help switch over to a bit of a Q&A with our two product leads and yeah we will take your questions there as well. So over to you, Florian. Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome. Let me share my screen. Let me know as soon as you can see it. Perfect. OK, then um, a warm welcome also from my side. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, thanks for the intro. So you already know that I'm Florian from SAP and uh, responsible for the data marketplace um, and other topics and today uh, it's my pleasure to um, show you a bit um, about what is SAP Datasphere uh, actually all about and um, what is the data marketplace we have embedded there and um, how you can actually uh, also benef uh, benefit from our solution and with that let me jump right into it um, maybe to start with a bit of a context where we are coming from um, so we as a um, classical data company um, talked, of course, to our customers. And um, when we talked to them, we saw that um, they did tremendous investments uh, for the past de de decades in their uh, technology, actually, to try to get the data that it spread around in their company um, together in one place to do some analytics. Um, to um, yeah, to uh, consolidate that, uh, to get some insights out of that. And um, the problem that we saw there was that that they oftentimes just move the data around. And um, the big um, thing that uh, that um, yeah cost them a lot of money was uh, that um, when moving the data around, uh, it oftentimes loses um, the valuable thing, and which is the the business semantics or the context of the data. Um, so the focus was on the technology and we now learned that the focus should rather be on the data itself and um, at the same time um, with the ri uh, rise of the cloud solutions um, there has been a tremendous uh, rise of 
different data uh, sources uh, that that uh, uh, that are now in uh, in the customer's landscapes. So the uh, on-premise system, of course, uh, are still in place. Um, they are uh, still mission critical. But on top of these, we have a variety of cloud uh, sources as well. We have uh, flat files, we have web services. So really a variety of data sources all coming together. And um, um, yeah, companies really struggling to bring them together and get some sense out of that. Um, and at the same time, um, what we are seeing is that when you take a look at a classical company, um, they have an IT department and they are in the meantime overwhelmed with uh, things they need to do for their business. And um, business and technology um, oftentimes have uh, two different um, approaches when it comes to work with data. So IT um, wants to have this really governed, centralized place where they have the full control of the data, where it's coming from, who can consume it, uh, who is able to, to see it at the end. So they would want to have this full controlled, govern, um, governed place for their data. And at the same time, the business needs data insights and they don't need it in two weeks, they need it now. So um, what they really want to have is um, some kind of self-service without the need um, to have um, the classical data modeling um, knowledge maybe. So they have, uh, of course, a rough um, understanding of what's going on, but uh, of course they don't have the expertise of an IT power user there. Um, and at the same time, as already said, they don't want to have the new report in two or three weeks when IT was ready to set it up, but they would rather um, have it in real time because um, nowadays um, this time to value needs to be rather fast in, in our business. Um, that's why we came up with SAP Data Sphere. And um, SAP Data Sphere, for those of you who don't know what it is, um, was uh, we started with uh, Data Warehouse Cloud in 2019, actually, and um, Data Warehouse Cloud was kind of the successor of our big data warehousing solution called um, Business Warehouse. Um, many of you might came across uh, this, so there was uh, the classical NetWeaver implication, and after that, uh, the BW for HANA Cloud for on-premise. And um, with Data Warehouse Cloud and now with Data Sphere. We basically um, provide a way to the cloud, um, especially to the public cloud for our customers with all the benefits that uh, uh, that came came with that. Um, with SAP Data Sphere, um, we are um, closely embedded directly in the so-called business technology platform or short BTP. So we are really in the heart of um, the SAP's data um, data architecture. Um, so basically what we are doing is that we are bringing all the data um, sources that uh, that are there, be it SAP or non-SAP data together. And with it, um, data sphere, we are taking care of the, um, the governance, we are taking care of the processing, the orchestration, and up to the consumption layer, where you then can um, yeah, consume the data with your analytics, um, with analytic apps, you can have planning use cases there, data science, intelligent data apps, and so on. So we are really the heart um, of a company where all the data is coming together. And um, at the same time, um, so having all this data together, we are providing a platform that is uh, that caters for the needs of an IT user as well as a business user. So what we are seeing at our customer base is that IT um, is basically setting up a so-called um, data layer where they um, bring all the data models together, all the data sources, um, do them some basic modeling, and then share that and open that for the business user who can then take the data and um, yeah, do their analytics on top, maybe um, adding some flat files, adding some uh, data from the data marketplace, actually bring that all together, do their analytics and the, uh, this in real time. And all of that without interrupting the rest of the system, because we have this space concept in place, as you can see on that slide as well. So um, basically every team or every user can have a space. And these are isolated workbenches then um, where you can work in without disrupting the rest of the system. Um, so if this was a um, real quick walkthrough um, to data sphere. There are many more capabilities. If you're interested in that, uh, please um, let me know and I can uh, give you some more insight there. But today, of course, um, we want to talk about the data marketplace, actually. 
And um, the data marketplace is basically um, um, a functionality that come that is coming out of the box with every SAP data sphere tenant. So no matter which tenant the customer chooses, the data marketplace is basically a part of everyone. And um, with the data marketplace, we have three main use cases. Um, one being the internal data marketplace, where we basically um, enable the users to build data products that can then be uh, consumed internally. So users can clearly define who is able to see it, who is able to consume it. Um, we are using that um, for the data democratization. So basically share the data uh, and uh, have a governed overview of uh, who is able to, uh, to work with it. Um, and most interesting in your case is the so-called public and private data data marketplace. And on the public data marketplace, um, we have uh, already a good catalog, uh, also thanks to our partner data rate of uh, data providers coming out of the box. Um, and um, the good thing is that the data providers providing their um, data there um, are basically um, directly embedded in our SAP data architecture. So um, if you go to an SAP data sphere tenant and you can directly look for data and you will see all the internal data sets, uh, in, uh, internal data products, as well as the public data products that are available to you. And if a customer decides um, to actually purchase a data product, they can simply put in a license key or maybe it's already uh, um, it's even for free and then load it to their space and directly work for it for that. So the ambition that we have um, with the data marketplace, it's I know it's not typically typical SAP, um, but we want to have um, the easiest processes in the market there to um, really be able to onboarding the data. And our ambition from the start was um, yeah to um, enable the access to external data in clicks and not in projects. So um, especially for SAP, um, uh, for SAP systems in the past, it was rather complicated to add external data. With our solution now, it's really a matter of clicks and um, you don't have to be an IT expert to actually onboard data there. Um, yeah, as already said, um, one of our valued partner um, on the um, public data marketplace is actually data rate. Um, and uh, they are really doing a great job in onboarding data. We um, always refer data providers um, to our uh, to data rate actually because uh, they really um, do a great job to facilitate the data onboarding um, and all the um, administrative stuff uh, around that. And um, so this is really a great approach, and um, their customers really like uh, like to see it and uh, are still astonished on how easy it is to get the data in. Um, yeah, we are basically um, providing with the data marketplace um, an end-to-end -end solution for data sharing as well as the discovery. Um, so as already said, this is a total in-app experience. Um, we have basically two counterparts. One is the data marketplace, which acts like um, yeah, the place, uh, acts like the catalog for all the data that is available. And on the other side, we have the so-called data sharing cockpit, and I will share, uh, show you that in a second in the system, where basically everyone can be a data provider and can um, yeah, produce data products, which then can be consumed by third parties or by, by your colleagues. Um, we also have a so-called context management in place. So um, a context can be seen as um, a smaller marketplace, basically, where you can um, um, that you can define who is able to uh, see the data that is in there, who, um, who is able to um, publish data in there. So um, if you, for example, provide as a data provider a sample, uh, a general sample data product in the public data marketplace, the customer is interested in that data, but it needs to be tailored for him or her, um, you can then um, directly publish that to a private context where only the customer is, is a member and with that, uh, no one else sees it and um, you can take care for all the um, data shipment uh, activities. Um, as said, we also have a license management in place there um, to um, yeah, provide access uh, to it. Um, important to say is that we as SAP are just um, providing the platform and uh, um, all the commercial processes will be handled by the data provider then. 
Um, so we as SAP don't earn um, anything with the data marketplace. It really um, has the sole purpose from our point of view to provide this external data to our customers. And um, the cool thing is, in addition, that you don't have to be a partner or something. So really everyone with a SAP data sphere tenant, and um, there are some really cheap implementations for that, um, like a test and demo uh, system, can be a data provider. So um, we don't uh, really uh, try to make it as easy as possible to, um, yeah, to be onboarded as a data provider. Um, yeah, how does that technically work? Not sure if we have any techies on the call here, um, but uh, in a nutshell, what we are doing is uh, that we um, basically set up um, as soon as you um, create a data product, what we are doing is that we are creating a so-called view uh, on our HANA, which is embedded in every data sphere tenant. And um, with, uh, from this HANA, we are sharing then via um, live uh, connection, for example, or via replication, um, the data um, you want to share with the, another tenant then. So this is uh, fully automated um, also. I will show you in a second how it actually works. Um, but uh, yeah, so you basically don't have to um, to care for anything. You this the processes are really as easy as uh, as you can imagine without the need to code something or uh, really touch the heart of the HANA there. Um, before I now come to a short demo uh, or to my next point, um, I will quickly talk about our customer base. Um, so you can see some logos there. It's of course not an extensive list. We have uh, some more customers, as you can imagine. Um, so the, um, we really have customers spanning across all industries. Um, so I, um, the the main, the most of our customers are coming from professional services or consumer products um, as an industry industry. But we really have. Also, uh, customers coming from agriculture, from air defense, from uh, um, industrial manufacturing, retail, automotive. So uh, everything you can imagine we have in our portfolio basically as a customer base. And the cool thing is um, maybe also interesting for you that um, they are always running their most critical data in our SAP systems. Um, so basically every one of every of these customers has their ERP. Um, in a, on a S4 HANA and um, we connect to that. We have the business semantics there and the customers are desperately looking for data to attach to that to uh, enhance their analytics there. So um, with data sphere, you have basically um, the option to point your, uh, to um, display your data directly at the heart um, of the company's data of our customers. And um, yeah, one important um, New thing that will come um, in next year um, um, will be that uh, we have a so-called data catalog in place. We can have all the artifacts um, that that are in your data sphere tenant and in the um, systems that you connected to it. And um, beginning next year, you will also have we will also have the data products directly here. So basically, if a user goes in and search for, for example, sales. Um, they will have everything, every object related to sales will appear. So um, with that, you have the chance as a data provider to directly appear um, in the uh, data modeling flow of, uh, of our customers. Um, yeah, speaking about data products, um, so this is a slide um, this, which is rather small and I will show you that in, a, in my system demo in a second, but um, I wanted to keep that slide in for you as a reference um, after this webinar as well. So um, we have some standard fields there directly that you can use to um, describe your data product to give some more information to make make it easier um, to be found by our by our customers. We have the option, for example, to um, add some some pictures there, um, some industry tags. Uh, the pricing information and so on. So we really want to make sure that you can put all the things um, that a customer would need to know uh, directly in here. And um, yeah, with data rate, um, we basically um, they provide um, all the data out of the box in a format that we can consume it and then uh, directly push it here. So you don't even have to take care for that um, in order to to work with us. And um, yeah. 
seeing is believing, as I always say. So I will now jump to uh, the system. And uh, yeah, this is uh, basically one SAP data sphere tenant. In my case, that's uh, one of our development tenants. And um, we have here the data marketplace. When I go to the landing page, I can see in a second that there are already the data products that are available here. Um, we have, as said, several data providers already onboarded, um, the majority of them via our partner uh, data rate. And if I now click on, on one, you can see, OK, um, you have some basic information there. Um, this one is connected by us, um, so it's uh, free of charge, actually. So I can directly download it in my space and keep on working with it. Um, there is some small description, some more pictures um, to describe what it is, and most importantly, sample data so that I can get an idea of um, what I'm actually um, getting when I when I download the data there. Um, and um, the counterpart of our data marketplace, as said, is the so-called data sharing cockpit. And here I got the full overview about my data provider. Um, and uh, I already created one, so you, everyone can have several data providers. There's no limit to that. Um, I already created one. We can take a quick look on how that looks like. <clears throat> So when I go in the edit mode here, I can see that, uh, as said, I can fit in the name, some URL there, some images, a description. Um, I can choose the data category that I that I'm um, yeah I want to deliver data for. I have the industries, SAP application if that's valid for you. I can uh, define the regional coverage, uh, the the regional coverage, and all of this data is basically important at the end um, to be found when a customer looks uh, for data. I can also um, choose the shipment type here, for example, integrated delivery um, is the one I would choose if I um, would send one file maybe to a customer and they can then work with it. But we also have the option um, to have a full time replication of uh, so a full replication. And with that, you will, would be even able to um, yeah, to have regular updates to your data product. But if you're interested in that, we have very good um, documentation on that as well, and happy to get some, uh, your questions on that as well. Um, the most important part here is the, to choose the right marketplace visibility. In our case, of course, it's the public data. Uh, we want to act as a public data provider. <clears throat> And if I now want to uh, create actually a data product, I would simply go here and say create product. And I simply have to fill in some stuff here, like for example, this uh, description. Um, so I won't uh, Publish this right now, so I can a bit uh, can be a bit lazy, but uh, basically I have the option to upload um, some picture here as, as well. So I did that, and uh, some sample data. So it's as easy as that. Um, I simply have to choose. Um, I already prepared it, of course, um, but um, it's really a small process to to be able to um, create that. Um, and after choosing my um, data category, so I'm here now in a, uh, I want to ship some city data basically, um, all industries and so on. And um, yeah, I basically have to fill in all the product details. I uh, also have the possibility to add a product ID here, some size categories. Um, of course, the context is a public data marketplace. We have here the sp a space for additional documents. Um, the pricing information, you can set it for free or with license key as said. Um, legal descriptions, some other legal documents, data documentation. So we really have several places where you can upload the data, um, your, um, your documents if needed. And the most important part is the product artifact. So what I did in advance is that I did some data modeling that I basically took a date a table containing city data and put put a view on top of that. And I can simply now select the space where this is in at the plus button and can say here, this is my view that I want to add. And it's already in there. And if, if that in case this is a bigger view and I don't want to uh, ship every column, I can choose the ones that I want to ship here. 
And in addition, I can directly um, put some data filter on it. So for example, I don't uh, for I don't want to ship the whole data set, but I want uh, only the region Europe or something like that. I can simply do that here. And um, after that, I'm already done. I can save my changes um, and the system will now in the background take uh, take care for all the um, connections and setting up the data products so or the technical things are now running in the background. And um, as soon as this is done, I can basically put this to the listed state and it will directly appear in the marketplace. Um, and as this is now rather ugly what I've built, uh, I will not uh, list it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can believe me, this is only one step away. And yeah, that's already the end of my small demo. Um, and with that, now over to you, Martin. Very interesting, uh, very nice. Thanks for the very good demo, Florian. Uh, I will now take over the, the screen share and will basically show um, the, the exact same thing in, in DCC. I will keep it short because uh, I know most of you know the DCC, the Data Commerce Cloud in and out, but nevertheless, uh, let, let's go into it, right? If, if you start, this is now a test environment for the Data Commerce Cloud with our own provider, right? Which we use for test, uh, um, test purposes. And then I uh, go in and uh, similar to what Florian just showed, we have uh, our so-called storefront where you just put in all the general provider information like the description, the slogan, provider logo, and so on. You can put a, give a, even more uh, um, um, information in there like a certification you have, use cases you are covering, also uh, categories or countries you are covering, and then once this is done, the next step would be to set up your data catalog. Already here in our test environment, there's already some stuff in. Usually uh, you would create a new one, but I would just update uh, a current one to, to put that it's already populated. And yeah, the, the flow is pretty pretty straightforward, pretty same as, as the one Florian just showed, right? The, the data product needs a title, some descriptions, some, some categories as well. Uh, a geographical coverage, if there's any for specific countries or so, can give even a bit more information like um, uh, volume, quality information, delivery, where you will be able to, to deliver the data, um, which formats, which update times and so on. And then last but not least, if, if, if needed, you can give also some pricing information. Now, once this is done, um, very important, and you saw this as well for, for the SAP marketplace, you should add samples yeah, or you need to add samples. We see that this is helping uh, enormously with, uh, with the conversion rates on, on our own marketplace, but also it is an integral part as you also saw in the demo of the SAP marketplace. And I already know in the background update, uploaded one, we just uploaded a CSV file, um, which I just now did. It's creating, it's creating a data dictionary of it. It's, in, uh, it's uh, um, also uh, detecting which kind of uh, uh, type there is in the, in the CSV file. If it's a string, a float, an integer, a timestamp, whatever, uh, you can see the, the sample preview. You can also see that based on some mapping, for example, you can do here or also, which is done in the background, we would redact any PII information so that it's not shared publicly on, on any, any marketplace. You, you publish the, the listing through, on, uh, through the DCC. And um, yeah, that's basically it. If you then publish it, the sample is uh, published. It's attached to the, to the listing. And um, last but not least, you go in, you, you see the sales channels page on, on the DCC, see all the channels where you're able to publish. And then you can also see that SAP data sphere is one of the channels where it's possible to uh, publish the, the, the data catalog to. Then you need to accept SAP's terms and conditions. You can check them here via this link. And then once this is done, you, uh, and it's a bit different to other channels we, we are integrating, you will be, um, you will be requesting the uh, uh, activation. You can see that here, the status. Then we, uh, together with SAP, look if this is a match, if this is something which is working on the SAP market sphere, 
uh, data uh, marketplace and if it's also some uh, the, the 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 listing has the the quality which is needed for the enterprise target audience uh, on this marketplace and if this is done if every uh, if the if the sign off has been done the, the agreement is done then it will be activated you will see it then here also in the status and then we do basically what Florent just said we automatically map all of the information given in DCC, be it the, the product type, the description, or whatsoever, the sample, the, the storefront to populate a provider profile, to populate uh, uh, um, uh, a listing catalog, which is then available publicly um, publicly within the um, SAP data sphere marketplace. And that's it. That's that's the whole journey of, of, of uh, being listed on the SAP. Uh, let us be a marketplace within DCC. Thank you very much. Back to you, Lucy. Thank you both. I think, yeah, really interesting to look at the history of SAP Data Sphere Florence. So thank you for that, as well as the nitty gritty of the, the components that go into creating a great listing and all of those elements. And obviously we see some similarities between what's required of a listing on SAP Data Sphere Marketplace, as well as within DCC as well. So thank you both for those demos. So if it's okay with everyone, I'll begin with the questions that you guys submitted when you signed up for the webinar, just so that we cover those while we still have time. And then I know we've got some questions in the Q&A channel, which we will come to as well. So again, talking about product listings and guidance on what makes a really good product listing that's suitable for enterprise clients, uh, one of our audience members asked, are there any resources to guide a company on how to price and package their data sets in order to maximize revenue potential? And I suppose that's directed at either slash both of you. Any resources on pricing your data sets? So um, yeah, from our side, as said, um, we are taking care of um, providing the platform. Um, so from the commercial process, um, we are not involved there, um, so it's it's a bit hard for us to give recommendation. Um, but what works fine when we are talking to customer is that um, they have a really good sample data set, maybe for free available to give the customer an idea of um, what he's getting. Um, and he can maybe already play around with it, of course, um, without uh, gaining too much value out of it already. But then um, it really depends on 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 the quality and of on on the kind of data that that you're offering. So if you're um, maybe offering analyst data that's uh, maybe from a higher value um, to a customer, then a sim uh, simply uh, the the um, city data which I showed just now because you can basically get that uh, everywhere. But um, yeah, it really shows that it uh, makes sense to to offer some free samples at least. To really give the to give an idea um, and uh, give uh, provide a, the opportunity to a customer to to play around with it and get an idea of what he's getting. Not sure, Martin, if you want to add something to that. No, I think that's a good summary. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like you said, Martin. It's the sample is very important to conversion on these listings, so it makes sense. Related to that, a question that came from the audience was you said you know there is more demand for certain kinds of, of data sets so analyst data sets is, is more sought after than a, a more simplistic tabular data set like the city one you showed florian uh, somebody asked what are the most sought after data products by asset class on the marketplace currently do you see any trends there yeah so as we have several industries uh, in our customer base, um, we have also several uh, um, groups of interest there. Um, most of the times, customers are trying to compare themselves with the competition. So benchmarking data is definitely one of the highest demanded data there, um, especially when it comes to uh, analyze the ERP data, because at the end of the day, they need to make uh, to learn um, actually what are my number? My numbers are now there, but um, what are they meaning at the end? Uh, how, I, how am I doing um, when I compare myself to the competition? Or um, another um, key priority of our customers is uh, sustainability at the end. So um, they want to 
have additional data um, to make sure that they are meeting certain KPIs, that um, they, they have the, uh, some benchmarking data there as well um, to really make sure that they are on the right track with the sustainability. So this is another big thing um, we are seeing right now. Um, but um, in general, we see interest in basically every data set that you can imagine. So um, people are really, um, and we try to en uh, encourage them in doing that, um, exploring the data that is available there in the meantime. So we really want our customers to go into, into the catalog and explore what else is there, what else can I use to um, basically get more insights out of the ERP data, which is already there, but what else can I do um, to, to get to uh, yeah to get even more insights and maybe with that be ahead of my competition. Yep. Did that answer your question? <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> Good <laughs> comprehensive answer. <laughs> this is a, a more commercial question. So um, yeah, if, if we don't know the answer to it now, we can ask more of the commercial folk at SAP. But do you allow for product promotion opportunities on SAP Datasphere? So this is something we do in DCC. Is it something you invest um, as well? So currently not, and we do that by purpose because in SAP, if you want to do that, you have to need, uh, you have to have a listing on our SAP store, and for to have a listing on the store, you have um, to be a SAP partner, and that comes in with some costs. So um, we stepped away from that. Um, what we can do is that we can uh, feature data providers that is done by us directly um, without any formal process to that. So if we are seeing that a data product might be interesting for uh, uh, many of our customers, we are always happy to feature them. But um, yeah, I said there is no um, really no promotion activity from our side um, because we really want to keep the hurdles as low as possible there to um, be onboarded. OK, makes sense. Uh, I will ask one more question from the questions we got from the audience before turning to those submitted during the chat just so we have time to cover them and this is again probably one directed at both both of you Martin and Florian for current data providers using DCC how is the integration between SAP Datasphere Marketplace and DCC going to develop in the coming weeks months can we expect any product changes or expanded demand there um, should I start again? Um, yeah, feel free. So currently um, the process is uh, a bit manually, but as we are a software company, of course, we want to automate that and we are close to, to doing so. So um, we also agreed with data rate to even extend our catalog on the marketplace with um, the data providers that are available out of the box there. And um, basically, you as a data provider, you don't have to care for anything. Um, we will take care for the listing, we will take care that you are there um, in every landscape, basically. Um, so this will definitely come. And um, we are seeing now with the rise of the internal data marketplace as a scenario, there are some synergies for the public one as well. And uh, as already um, mentioned in my presentation, um, beginning of next year, all the data products will also be available in our data catalog. So this is really the central component where you can find all the artifacts. So with that, Basically, the data product will be available directly um, when, a, when a user looks for um, objects to, to do demo data modeling. I'm not sure, Martin, yeah. do you want to add something? Yeah. No, that's very interesting. And I think that will also uh, give even more exposure to data pro providers being listed on the SAP marketplace. I think what we also, I mean, Flo and I, we meet on a, on a bi-weekly basis and, and discuss ideas we, we have for, for our in, uh, integration and partnership in the future. And what we discuss there as well is obviously we, we are now doing a good job in, in, in syncing the listings and so on. But I think in, in terms of uh, uh, product depth, there's uh, uh, also some, some additional stuff we could do. I, I like the the uh, stuff regarding the artifacts you, you showed in your demo, for example, let's see, that's that's uh, oh, that's something I could I could imagine that the listings being even better on our listings being even better on the on the marketplace, and then on the other side, I think a general uh, a thing um, which which we see a lot of potential in is then not only delivering sample data 
to to the customers on SAP, but um, also then once the deal is done, being able to to support uh, our data providers to deliver data also to the customers on SAP to really um, make the, the 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 transaction complete. Then. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that segues quite nicely into Lucas, your question about they've already published some listings on data rate and if they wanted to sync those listings to SAP Datasphere Marketplace, would it have to be all of the listings or could Zite select which listings they want to appear there and withhold some of them? Uh, that's that's a question for us. It's, it's on our roadmap. Uh, we, we know that at, at the moment it's only possible to sync all of the listings uh, which are currently available in the catalog to any channel, right? Uh, but we do see that this is uh, uh, a common request and, and, and totally understandable thing that you would like to uh, control also the listings being synced to all of the channels we have integrated, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, short answer, not yet, but uh, we are working on it. Good stuff. And Lucas, we'll stick with your second question. How do providers receive the contact requests from SAP Datasphere at the moment? Is it in the same lead notification inbox in DCC? And how do providers know that the request came from SAP Datasphere? I think also here uh, there are, are two ways. Uh, we do see that also uh, there are some requests of from four products on the on the marketplace are coming from. Um, uh, internal teams of SAP because they see that this is something they could they could use for projects with with their partners. For this, this will be then handed over to us, our sourcing team, and our agents will will then get in contact with the with the providers. For the others, it's it's an email basically, like other channels. We are working also here to get this more into the involved into the natural native inbox of the DCC. Um, it's it's uh, in the making, but not yet there. Yeah, that would be a really nice feature to have everything in one place for sure. Next question we'll take from Vlad, who asked at the beginning, how can providers access SAP to see their, hello Vlad, <laughs> how can providers access SAP and see their product listings as if they were a user looking for data? Um, so currently our catalog is unfortunately not um, available on a public website, um, but what you can do is we have a so-called guided experience tenant uh, for free where you have to register once um, with your mail address and then you get access to a real uh, data sphere tenant where you then can navigate to the um, marketplace and look for your listing there. So it's a bit of an uh, a pity that it is not publicly publicly available, but um, we have that on our radar um, to to um, prepare that as, as well. Um, there's actually our um, yeah, uh, Jürgen Müller uh, is asking for that already. Uh, so <laughs> we have uh, quite a high attention in on our board as well. Um, and uh, but for now, this would be the the, the easiest and uh, way to to get uh, to to see a listing there. Yeah. Okay, and I'll. Follow up on that, then maybe Florian, we can provide the, the information because I think that's a very good, yep. uh, good thing. Yeah, I was just about to say I'm happy to send up some follow up links so you can all access those guided experience and things like that. Cool. Pat had a question or, or comment related to samples. So, is it a problem if, if I'm understanding your question correctly, is it a problem if providers are dealing in potentially sensitive data that samples are mocked up. Is this something that? Yeah. Not at all. So it, okay. it's more like um, getting an idea for the semantics. So when you're doing your data modeling, of course, you need to know how the data looks like. So that's more, I mean, it's it's natural that the data provider won't share their <laughs> real data with a customer <laughs> upfront. So um, mocked up data is totally fine. It's more like really giving it the customer an idea of what he's actually getting also with mocked up data. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Cool. Then we have a question from our very own Emma. <laughs> Florian, this is probably directed at you. What is the character limit, if any, for product titles within SAP Datasphere? 
I never reached it, um, <laughs> but I think it's 255. Uh, so uh, it's it's a big. Uh, you won't face any issues there. So um, that should be that should be covered. Yeah. Cool. And then another question from Emma is: How are the data categories between DCC and SAP mapped? Have we got the same category tree between both marketplaces? If not, how how do we navigate that? Yeah, um, basically that's part of the integration, right? So we are now, obviously we don't have the exact same categories. Uh, I think Data Aid, for example, has very in-depth uh, categories for the uh, marketplace and so on. What we are doing is we we have a mapping internally where, where we say these all these kinds of categories because there are subcategories of a certain category they are mapped into this uh, SAP category and so on. So. They might have sim similar names, but uh, then uh, in, uh, spelled differently or whatever. And this is part of the integration to do the mapping. Yeah. yeah. And in addition, we are on a constant path to improve. So um, we will definitely add more flexibility there on our marketplace as well. So in the future, this might be even easier um, for both ways to map that. Cool. So I think we probably have time for one or two more questions from from those that I prepared, but I would also give the audience opportunity if there are spontaneous questions that you'd like to ask to, to raise your hand now we can turn your microphone on or put it in the chat. If not, I will resume to the, the questions that we have prepared. No, OK, then again, this is one which either Martin or, or either of you, Florian, can take. What trends do you foresee when it comes to how enterprises will source external data going forward? So I know, Florian, you were talking about there's this emphasis on anyone being able to access mission critical data as soon as they need it. Is this need for speed, as it were, something that you see continuing? Um, definitely. So we at SAP and our um... Internal IT, we are actually now implementing Data Sphere, um, which is a quite a big project, as you can imagine. And the data marketplace will be the center of, of everything there. So um, we will have the internal data products, but of course we will have the full catalog of our public data products there as well. And with that, um, I, as a business user, I would now be able to basically do my analytics, um, as I just told you. And this is already a reality, and we see this uh, trend. Um, starting now with, um, with with many customers we have, especially with the big ones that are that have simply the problem how they can enable their business user, how they can get more data on without the need to have this costly projects there. And we, with our data sphere solution, and especially with the marketplace, we simply provide the simple processes to do so. And um, this is a clear trend we see across the market. Um, it, it's from the utmost importance that that you provide the data and uh, yeah to to be able to work with with um, with external data as well. Yeah, I think that's a general trend that that we're seeing in all data related companies. It's this efficiency yeah. is becoming the customer's big demand. I think that's probably all we have time for. I did check your runtime fifty minutes, so we've gone a little bit over. Hope that everyone's okay with that. And yes, I can just conclude with sharing our, our final slides, which are just a quick thank you to everyone who's joined today. I really hope that you found the webinar. Oh, is that another question? <laughs> no problem at all. It was a thank you. <laughs> it was a thank you. <laughs> Very polite. Well, thank you both for joining. Thank you for yeah, signing up for the webinar and I really hope that you found some good insights here and if there's anything that wasn't answered during the scope of the conversation, get in touch with, with me and I'm happy to do a follow-up. I will, like I've said, send a recording of this webinar so that everyone can send it to their internal teams and as well I'll put together a package of follow-up links and stuff so that you can get to grips with the resources that Florian and Martin were talking about today. And otherwise, I wish you all a really lovely rest of your day, evening, wherever you are in the world. And stay tuned for the next in our webinar series, which is all designed to help data providers 
grapple with the tools we've integrated with at Data Commerce Cloud to grow your data business. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Florian. Thanks, 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 Thank Martin. you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you.